as they they went to more and more sensors and more and more things until the trucks and the engines were running totally off of electronics and and uh, now if I was just throwed in it from anybody just throwed in it didn't grow up with it they wouldn't know what to do so but anyway I kind of grew up with it and I, but I had a real good boss and he helped me out with that and I, I had a good we used to have to write some stories and when I get stuck on some words my, my mechanic buddies I had would help me uh, fill the story out I, I, I muddle along When I was about 20 years old, I thought, well, I was going to get me a ham license. And I went down there, they, and at the Mobile College over there, they were giving a free lesson on how to be a ham operator. And you'd have to have to go in there, and you had to build, at that time, uh, uh, some kind of a receiver. Had Okay. Yeah, I seen uh, they have some type of. Uh, I, I thought it was maybe CenturyLink, but I think it's a different company that uses uh, little Yagi antennas, and they point it at their uh, their transmitter and uh, uh, a site where there's a repeater or a transmitter. And uh, yep, I've seen those out in the country actually on uh, a lot of the uh, uh, farm buildings. Like there's a, a propane. Uh, service uh, and uh, a couple others out there in the country uh, by my brother so yep I'll look into all that and uh, I don't need to have a whole lot of streaming stuff or anything like that for uh, internet just enough to do uh, emails and things like that you know I would think a local service would probably be good enough maybe it's a little slow but at least it's there you know <laughs> Yeah, but out in the country, Claude, there's uh, there's no uh, cable. They don't have cable TV or nothing out there because it's too far out. Yeah, you're using the phone line. That's what I'm using, the phone lines here, and mine's fast enough for me. Right, right, okay, yep. That's I think that's what CenturyLink is. My brother, uh, uh, Richard, over in Fenton, had CenturyLink uh, for a long time, and then uh, eventually he got rid of it. I don't know why, but... Uh, yeah, you're right. That that who that who does that? So that is an option. Yeah, so we got DSL over the phone lines here, and they uh, uh, they recommend you use a bigger gauge wire coming in anytime you can with that stuff. Is that what the name of the service is? CenturyLink. Ours is through AT&T here, but uh, it's, it's the typical DSL service, I think, is probably what you got out there. It's just a matter of a different provider. Yeah, I'm starting to lose you, Claude. Uh, anyway, I, I think uh, CenturyLink is uh, one of the ones that do, uh, does the, uh, the landline type uh, phone line stuff. The phone better these days. Go ahead, Al. I guess he's not hearing me. N9IMH, W9CL. Yeah, I think he said he's getting a little bit uh, light there right now on ground waves. So I'm trying to find that picture of that uh, one I had. I may have deleted it. And, uh, Miss, you remember I had a cowboy hat on and I was uh, standing out there on the side of the house during the estimate. Uh, I think I had it on a push pole. And, uh, and uh, of course, I don't have, didn't have the proper meter to just uh, run it down and, you know, see. So I'd go back in the house and, uh, and work it that way. And I have a picture of that farmhouse somewhere. and. Uh, see it there. Oh yeah, here it is. This is where, this, yeah, this is it. I found it. I got a chicken on my shoulder. Thank God. Oh. Yep. I'll out there.
portable. I can take them anywhere. But everything is also augmented by a number of acoustic panels that are homemade. I think there's, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight of them. So there's quite a lot of dampening. At the back of the room, I have a bookshelf that has all sorts of stuff on it. So it's really nice for diffusion. There's a good number of books, but there's also quite a lot of audio accessories and that really breaks things up pretty well so it works as a diffuser and also as a nice absorption panel and that's what it's supposed to do. For headphones I use 90% of the time the Audio-Technica ATM 50Xs because they're closed back and they sound pretty good but I like the Sennheiser HD 650s which if I'm checking a mix that's what I'll use I can't use them normally because they're open back and then that makes the recording sound funny if I'm doing a voiceover or doing a podcast so the ATM 50Xs get most of the work so how do I get audio into this? So generally speaking, everything comes from Skype. And this also includes phone. If I talk to somebody via phone, I call them via Skype. The reason why it's easy for me to get Skype into the Pro Tools session that I have open, not quite super easy, but easy enough now that I figured it out. and. The way this works is I have have a little utility called Soundflower or in between that basically routes the audio from Skype from any app into any other app. It's an old utility. It's kind of flaky. Sometimes it doesn't boot up. And it took me a while to actually make it work because 